Bobby Wilkes. Bobby Wilkes was an experienced funeral director and he advised people not to see the body as the casket was being lowered as it may be hard for the families. But once he was trapped, the graves buried by Wilkes were all filled with garbage like bottles, dirty diapers, cans of dog food, and bags of hair. He didn't lower the caskets, but in fact dumped the bodies instead. The Body Baron of Broward County. In 1977, Joseph Damiano started a body transport business in South Florida. He was hit with many lawsuits. A woman sued him, claiming that her husband's ashes were combined with someone else's. He was blamed for losing a woman's ashes, and later it was found he didn't have a license to run an incinerator. He even rented out 600 bodies illegally for $110 each. Mark Caleb's. On June 27, 1998, at midnight, the staff of a funeral home in London, Kentucky, was informed there had been a break-in. Nothing seemed strange, but when they looked in the casket of a nine-year-old Brittany Ray Bradley with her underwear missing. There was no traces of sexual abuse, but it was confirmed that Mark Caleb's robbed the deceased's undergarment. Mark Villella The funeral director Mark Villella and his wife, Exley, had a terrible fight. After that, Exley went missing. Her sister suspected Mark and the investigations began. Mark hosted a closed casket funeral for the 89-year-old Marjorie Hutchinson, and the police believed that he had put the body of Exley in the same casket. Anthony Parisi Anthony Parisi, co-founder of a grocery store in Mount Vernon, New York, died at the age of 83. He died of natural causes, and on July 26th, When his body was being held at the Yanatuono Funeral Home, the employees of the funeral home discovered that his head was missing. Nothing else in the funeral home was missing. Julie Mott The 26-year-old Julie Mott lost her life battling against cystic fibrosis and left after a mysterious case post her death. Julie's body was taken away by someone from the funeral home. The police and her family were stunned and it is still unknown where Julie's body vanished. Robert Winston. After his retirement as an electrician, Robert Winston got into the funeral business. He was bad at dealing with finances, but his one source of steady income was McGee Women's Hospital, who delivered him dead fetuses and newborns to cremate. He didn't have the money to cremate, however, and didn't have a license, so he started storing them in his garage. In 2005, the police searched the garage and found several fetuses which came from the hospital between 2000 and 2002. The Biomedical Tissue Service Mastro Marino's company transplanted bones and tissues from the deceased bodies, violating the legal rules. When the former host of PBS's Masterpiece Theater, Alastair Cook, died, he was 94 and had cancer, but his arms and legs were taken from his body. Mastro Marino made $10,000 to $15,000 by illegally harvesting bone and tissue from at least 1,076 bodies. He is now a multimillionaire. Walter and Helen Pestinikas. Joseph Cly, a 90-year-old retired coal miner with black lungs, made funeral arrangements with Walter and Helen, who owned a local funeral home. On November 15, 1984, Cly was discovered dead in the bar of the Pectinasis. The authorities saw that the area where Cly had breathed for two and a half years was inappropriate for human habitation. Inside the funeral home, he was slowly starved to death. The Tri-State Crematory Scandal. Tommy Ray Brent Marsh was forced to run his father's business, a crematorium that's built in the backyard of the family home in Noble, Georgia. Rumors spread that in the woods that surround the Marsh's property, there were a lot of dead bodies. Investigations were conducted when complaints came over, but nothing unusual was discovered. Police went to the cemetery and found about 334 bodies that weren't cremated. Some bodies were up to five years old. Marsh was caught with 787 crime charges. 